If you look at the temple structure, deep in the the sanctum sanctorum, all you will find is a stone, six to seven feet or nine feet, including the pedestal, etc. A whole lot of people are ridiculing why this much decoration to a stone. What's there in it? How can you worship this dumb stone as God? To all the idiots who are ridiculing idol worshiping, let's talk science, okay? What is it? It's a rock. What is rock? Rock is made up of metals and minerals. If you go to a valley and shout something, what does the rocks do? It will give you an echo. <laughs> it's an open place. The sound travels, hits the rock, and throws it back. This phenomena is called echo, and it's scientifically proven. Everybody knows it. Depending on how loud you send these sound waves, accordingly, rocks will throw back an echo. Every rock. That's why you will hear two, three sounds at different intervals. Visually, you cannot see what's happening, but you can hear it. This is in open space. Imagine if you're doing it in a closed place. What would be the amount of echo? Obviously, much more than the open space. Let's get inside the temple. You will find a linga or a statue made of a rock, and it's placed in a closed wall structure with a gali gopuram on the top. That means a pyramid structure with a tip pointing to the sky. There will be no ventilation. Tight packed and covered with stone walls to a precision where even the light cannot enter. Now people send some sounds to the rock. Not just today; it's been practiced since thousands of years. They are sending some sounds to the rock continuously, right from the morning to afternoon to evening till night, every day. We all know that sound has a form. To all the lower Q people, I'm going to show you a few experiments where particles form different patterns and forms due to various types of sounds. I saw a beautiful music video on this channel in which they show how water, fire, particles respond to the sound. It's an incredible experiment. You must watch it. It is a film to describe to you the effect of cymatic frequencies. Now, 72% of your body is water. 12% is earth. 6% is air. 4% is fire, and the remaining is space. Don't you think this sound has an impact on your system? Look at how drastically the water is responding to the sound. Similarly, fire. In fact, everything in the cosmos responds to the sounds. That's why yogis of the past have always said sound is the basis of existence. Every form is a certain reverberation of sound. If you master the sound, you can play with the five elements. That's how the sages of the past used to walk on water, disappear into the air, walk through the walls, etc. In Harry Potter movie, what you have seen is just a fiction story. But here, we have got yogis who did all that for real. Even though there are many mistakes. We can do these things, not just them. You and I can do it if we attain certain mastery over the sound. You need a perception beyond the senses to do that. For that, you need to do a different level of sadhana. You can't do that in a laboratory through some dumb experiment. All those who tried either ended up neurotic or died an utter failure. Wasted a lot of money in the research. So except dhyanam, technically there is no other way. Sorry to disappoint the people who are lazy to yoga. Okay, sound. I recommend you to watch Moses' experiments in YouTube to understand better what I'm trying to say here. Inside the temple, they chant some mantras. What happens is the sound will touch the stone and bounce back in different directions because it's a closed room. The sound has to pass out through the main door, and whoever is standing in front will be completely soaked in that energy. Now, what do they chant? Vishnu Sahasra Namam in the morning and Lalita Sahasra Namam in the night. There is Shiva Pasana Mantram, Linga Stakam, Am Namah Shivaya, Nirvana Shatakam, etc., which will have different impacts on the human system. I really wanted to check what impact these sounds have on the human system, so I went to a neurosurgeon to really experiment and document the impact of these sounds on the human brain, the human system. I took my friend Rahul for the EEG test. It's called electroencephalography, where you can see the brain activity, the activity of the nervous system of a person on a computer. We played Lalita Sahasra Namam to him. Rahul, relax your face. Oxar first time, sir. Ah, right.
the kind of parasynthetic differences that he is getting is anonymous. Oh my god, then I understood. These sounds are engineered in such a way that the rhythm of the chant will go inside your parasynthetic nervous system and will put you into deep sleep within 3 to 5 minutes. First thing is, the chant is some thousands of years old. How could these ancient sages know that these sounds impact the parasynthetic nervous system? This they do it in the night. And in the morning they chant Vishnu Sahasranama, the thousand names of Bhagavan Vishnu. And again these sounds are engineered in such a way that it will wake you up to a peaceful and refreshing state of mind. I am sure most of you are suffering with painful wake-ups with such an irritated mind that you can't sleep and you don't enjoy waking up. If you listen to Vishnu Sahasranama in the morning, it will clear all these clutches in the brain and you will be super fresh when you wake up. Even today you can go and check in Tirupati temple. They will chant Vishnu Sahasranamam in the morning and Lalita Sahasranamam in the night. This is a clear science evolved and being practiced in temples. Even now in most of the temples they are still doing it without knowing why they are doing it. I went and asked one of the priests in my hometown. He said, no, no, they are doing it since so many years. Or they will say something like, it's good for your health, you will get money, pregnancy, etc. This is one more reason why temples are ending up in ruins here. There is no one to talk about the science behind it. Why sounds and why the rock? So they call this rock as God and when you chant for God, their idea is to benefit the human beings living in the city. It's a free service. Will your doctors treat you for free? But these temples are doing it for free, since ages. But now, these temples are under attack. It's time to free them from government's control. Temples properties are being looted. They think too much of gold is available there. You know what? The temple design is such. There will be a Dvajasthambam, which is made of some metal, usually gold or copper. Brass is a good conductor of sound. Gold is an excellent conductor of electricity and it has higher receptivity of the energy. To all the idiots who are worried about so much gold being used in the temple construction, just smack them with this video. This is a clear science and most sophisticated engineering that even the modern science has no clue of. There is much more to the design of the temple. The design is such, the energy waves reverberated by the Gopuram will pass straight and touch the antenna kind of arrangement here and stored in the energy format. People are supposed to touch it, a lot of people touch their heads without knowing why they are doing it. And then you are supposed to walk into the space which is filled with this energy transmitted by the rock inside. Doesn't matter whether you are a Muslim, Hindu or a Christian, you can't escape the energy. You will be basked in the glory of that energy. You can actively feel the difference after you pass through the path.